Hey and welcome to today's video. So in today's video, I'm actually going to be talking to you about how I became a lead app developer without a computer science degree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically talk to you about some tips and um, some tricks and things that I had to go through in order to get to the role where I am now. So just to give you a bit of context about me, I'm actually self-taught and I remember buying a course called Designing Code by Men2 and that taught me how to build an iOS app. From there, I applied for the job at the company that I work for now. And at the time, it was for a senior role. I didn't know this. So I turned up thinking. Okay. And um, basically, um, they managed to make a position for me because they were impressed by the app that I built. Now, I don't want to go too much off track here. But if you're interested in a video or like an Ask Me Anything kind of video, then let me know in the comment section below. And also as well, follow me on Twitter as well at TonsDev. And I don't mind answering more of your questions if you're interested in learning a bit more about me. So if I'm being honest with you, no one wants to work with a turd. So if you're a turd, um, no one's going to want to work with you or for you. So basically just be a calm person, you know, just be a nice person, like genuinely be invested in the people that you're working in and just get to know them as well. So I don't mean just basically talking to people like, taking a bunch of like check boxes to fulfill a requirement, like actually get to know these people and build relationships with them. And you'll see that, you know, people will be invested with you. So I feel like that's just basic soft skills. So if you're someone who's struggling with, you know, learning soft skills, then, you know, you might want to get that checked out. <laughs> so um, basically just be a kind person and you'll see that people will want to work with you and embrace you and the culture they're trying to bring to your team. So the next point I want to talk about is looking out for others. So me personally, I'm a very loyal person. So in terms of loyalty, I would never throw anyone on my team under the bus. We're all in this together, innit? So I think it's very important to look out for others on your team. And if they do make a mistake, then it's fine. Keep it moving and just, you know, they'll learn from it next time. So don't throw your team members under the bus and support your team as well whenever they're in difficult situations. You also need to be able to motivate your team members as well. So if your team's in a really tough time because they've been given estimates by, you know, <laughs> so uh, in terms of like the stressing them out, then try and motivate them. You know, there's always a finishing line. You need to get this over the line as well. And, you know, be sympathetic with them as well, because obviously we've all been in that boat before where we've had, you know, tight deadlines or things are not going our way. And it's very easy to not put yourself in their shoes, but make sure that you do and try to help them out however it is that you can. So no one wants to work in an environment where like there's a blame culture or it's toxic, like no one wants to come and work with that. So just basically build a good vibe in the team and, you know, everyone will work well together. Also as well, it's really important to celebrate people's wins on the team. Now, I think this is especially, you know, important for people who are juniors and just starting out at a new job or anyone who's just starting out at a new job anyway. It builds confidence, giving them, you know, the praise that they're actually doing a good job, whether that's saying, you know, um, code reviews or just telling them they've did a good job building a feature or providing you with some information. You know, everyone likes being gassed up, you know what I mean? Like everyone likes it. So I would highly recommend that you basically promote that positive attitude in the team as well and gas people up as well you know people make mistakes every things can go left at any time you know i've had in my career as well but what you want to do is you want to bring the whole team together to support everyone to reach that common goal so that's what you should always be aiming for it's really important that you mentor people and you know help them grow and, and upskilling is actually a really important thing in anyone's you know career you want to help people get better as well but it's also really important as well for you to remember as a lead that you're not actually going to know everything. And, you know, to be a lead, um, I think there's an idea that you have to be the best programmer, which actually isn't true. Um, your job is more about providing solutions and leading the team as a leader. It, you know, you do need to obviously know how to program, but you don't need to be the best programmer on the team. But at the same time, I still do feel that, you know, you should try to learn new skills from people and also, you know, upgrade your skill set as well to basically become a better programmer. Now, one of the things that I like to do in terms of getting better is I like to, you know, subscribe to newsletters and whatnot. And I also like to talk to other people in the team and see if they've learned anything new. And I also do this, um, you know, do this thing with my, you know, my boss where we basically have a checkup um, every single month. And I'll basically always be asking him for advice in terms of what I can do to become a better um, lead app developer. Now, that's not always um, code related. It can be management related as well for me anyway, because there's things that obviously, you know, I don't know everything. 
there's things that I don't know that I can still learn from him who has a lot of experience more than me. So it, listening to that advice and not taking it personal and just becoming a better lead developer is something that you always want to keep on doing. And I think even as an iOS developer, it's something that you always want to be doing as well. It's just taking feedback and getting better. So you also need to be able to come in clutch. Now, if you don't know what come in clutch means, it's actually a basketball you know, term for someone who scores like, you know, at important moments. So if you follow basketball like I do, um, you remember with the Chicago Bulls, man, like, you know, Scottie Pippen and Dennis Rodman will be looking at Michael Jordan to basically get that buzzer beater and he'd make it in the important situations. You know, in this aspect, you are Michael Jordan because you're the lead. There's a lot of responsibility that's on your, you know, on your shoulders that you need to handle. So as a lead, you basically need to be able to provide people who come to you with the information that they need. And also as well, you need to be able to make critical business decisions. So if someone needs you to make a decision or if a decision needs to be made to help move something forward, you're expected to basically provide insight and context and a decision to help get it done. It's also easy to think that you're only going to basically have to deal with iOS development, but this isn't true. So on your day-to-day -day job, yeah, you're actually going to have to deal with a lot of other things which don't include built programming iOS apps at all. So, you know, this can include you having to work with UI and UX designers, working with backend teams to come up with a backend solution, even working with, you know, BAs to basically get requirements right. You'll basically have your finger in a whole different bunch of pots in it. I know in my day to day job, one day I could be looking at Ruby and wondering <laughs> what is going on because I've had to do this as well. It's really helped me in terms of my skill set and learning more things, you know, because now I have experience in this, these different fields. I think you also need to ask yourself as well, you know, do you really want this? Because the expectations that come with the lead, um, some people are quite surprised by it. So in my day to day job, I actually really rarely ever write code. So it's very rare for me to actually do it. I probably say I write code about maybe 20% of the time of my, you know, working, you know, week. Honestly speaking, sometimes when I look at the code that I have to review, I actually do feel a bit like rusty and like kind of like an old man. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? But this doesn't really bother me. So my day to day job, um, just to give you some things that I do is like mentoring, helping, making sure the processes are aligned, providing people with information for requirements, uh, doing research and development for anything that we can do to improve the process of the team. And that's just a few things that I have to do. So my job is more thinking about the business and also as well, I need to think about how the decisions that I make will Im impact clients as well. So let's say, for example, there's a new feature that Apple just came out with, i.e. the widgets. That's something that I can recommend to a client to help boost, you know, their UX and UI. So we could present that to a client and then boom, they've now got something new that they can use to help make their user base happy. So I think something that you need to consider is, is this really what you want? Because I'm not going to lie to you. If you want to be a lead, it's actually slowly more moving into a managerial role. If you're someone who actually just enjoys writing code, then maybe being a senior is more suited for you. And if you want me to do a video on how to become a senior, then leave a book, uh, leave some comments in the comment section below and I'll do that for you as well. So just think about what it is that you want and ask yourself, is this really what you want? So you also need to be able to communicate. Now, this is important in any job. So you need to be able to basically present your ideas to people, whether that's your team members, your boss, clients, whatever that is. So you want to make sure that your ideas are clear and, you know, everyone understands them. Now, that's not to say that every single idea that you say is amazing and everyone needs to follow it, but you need to be able to get your point across. And also as well, it's really important that you're able to listen to it, other people's ideas to you because we're not running a dictatorship here. You know, this ain't no dictatorship. Everyone's opinion is valid, isn't it? So make sure that you listen to other people's opinions and take them on board as well. And if their idea isn't really, you know, the best idea, then you need to find a good way to be able to communicate that and, you know, softly tell them that, you know, it's good. I, I appreciate your, you know, opinion as well, but it won't benefit the company because A, B, C, D, rather than just basically just saying to them that, you know, they're dumb. So don't be doing that. So that's pretty much everything from today in terms of this video. I hope you enjoyed the tips and the advice and some of the stuff that I went through in terms of becoming a lead. Now, if you want me to do that, ask me anything, or if you want me to do any other type of videos like this as well, um, leave a comment in the comment section below and I'll obviously, you know, consider it. I would definitely appreciate it if you give this video a thumbs up um, as well, as well as subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. 
So that is everything from me. I'll catch you all in a bit. Deuces.